Oh, it's you again. Welcome back. <laughs> uh oh. What the hell? I told you many times. Get back into your hole. You will get me alive? Get out of here. You're not the real one. <sighs> oh, hi. I'm Mark. I used to be a senior artist at Blizzard Entertainment, and now I teach art for a living. In this new episode of my weekly series that I call YouTube Art School, I'm going to show you how to draw dynamic poses and what to avoid to end up with stiff looking characters. Gross. Nobody wants that. Uh oh. Quickly, let's get this class started! Class is in session. Pay attention. We're going to be drawing a lot today. A lot of dynamic poses. That's what most artists want to be able to draw, so it's time I tackle the topic since I never have until now. First though, I spent 30 years accumulating knowledge about art, so you're gonna have to pay the class fee of either one like or one sub before you continue watching. I know, very expensive, but it's good value, I promise. Today's class will be split in three parts or three levels. Basically, I'll just be adding more and more things to consider with each level, and the idea is that the more of these pointers that you can include when drawing poses for your characters, the more dynamic they will be. The order is there so that you can start at level 1 if you're not super used to drawing dynamic poses, and then go up the levels as you practice more and as you feel up for a greater challenge. The levels are completely made up, but they're in order of increasing difficulty, so I think it's more helpful to tackle them in the order I present them than dumping it all on you at once. Now, keep in mind that it's a short YouTube class, so we'll be covering all of this pretty quickly. But if you're looking for more, as in a complete art education program from home, check the coupon code down in the video description and use it for a big discount on my world famous art school program you have until the end of the month. Let's begin with level one, focusing on dynamic idle poses, or in other words, balanced poses. Obviously, to draw characters in dynamic poses, you'll first need to be able to build a character, construct a character. The idea when sketching poses is to keep your characters void of details for as long as possible until you're completely happy with your pose drawing. I shared my own drawing recipe in a previous class, so check out how I construct my characters there first. I'll put the link to the class in question in the video description. Check it out. Going into this, keep your sketches loose. Focus on getting the form first, and only then move on to details. Anyways, here we have a boring character just standing there. Look at her. Tch, all stiff. Not very dynamic. The first thing we can do to make this look more dynamic is to simply introduce a little offset. Essentially breaking the symmetry. This is going to be the first thing that we do to our pose to start making it more dynamic. Because symmetrical things are usually not very dynamic. When we tilt the shoulders and the hips slightly in opposite directions, and that part is important, don't want them to be parallel, we can get a pose that has a lot more flavor. Not only that, but by pushing one leg behind, for example, and placing her right foot forward, we get a little bit of depth too. Much less boring now, don't you agree? I agree! Another thing to consider for more dynamic poses at level 1 will be the center of mass. In my new pose here, the character is definitely more dynamic, but none of the changes had any impact on the center of mass. Wait, what's that? The center of mass is the imaginary line that splits the mass of the character right down the middle, like the scale where the two sides weigh the same, perfectly in balance. If the balance is off, if there's more mass on one side, the character is no longer in balance and will get the impression that it's about to fall. Make sure your characters are balanced. Imagine this is the pose, for example. The center of mass would be around here in this case, so it's easy to imagine that she's about to hit the floor hard, unless she supports herself with her arm or leg somehow. Ah, now she's balanced. She won't fall. Important to mention though, the center of mass is only relevant when the characters are balanced on something like the ground. If they're floating or falling, obviously it doesn't apply. One more thing that you can do to your characters to make them look more dynamic in an idle pose is to not have them face straight ahead like this one or completely sideways. Turning them around to the side just a little bit adds a lot of dynamism since once again, we're going further away from a symmetrical pose. Characters that are facing the camera perfectly straight on are always going to feel a little stiff. Anyways, the last thing to keep in mind at level 1, and again, pretty obvious stuff, but 
it would be to include some gesture like in the third pose. This makes the pose even more asymmetrical and at least suggests an action even though the character might be idle for the pose. The balance here still works but she'll have most of her weight on the right foot where the center of mass lands, approximately. With her left foot just softly touching the ground and no longer supporting a lot of weight, you can almost imagine that she could lift her left foot off the ground and she would still be kind of balanced like a flamingo. When you shift the balance around a bit like this, it forces you to adjust the counterweight to ensure that the character doesn't fall. And as a result, the character looks more dynamic. Yay. So up until now, it's been pretty basic, but at level two, we'll be turning the heat up and looking at action poses. Moving from balanced poses towards imbalanced poses. I think of those as poses that happen during Mm, an action, <laughs> mind blowing stuff. But that's gonna be the main difference compared to what we've seen so far. Gesture drawing, by the way, is a great way to practice this stuff. Poses, just like anything else in art, get better as you practice from reference. No references, no learning. Now anyways, poses will always look more dynamic when most of the body is involved in the motion. My character here is extending her entire body to reach as high as possible with her hands, where even the head and neck position contribute to the pose. Good action poses can typically be simplified as a C or an S, or just one or two curves. The curvier the curves, the more dynamic the pose will be. Also, usually, one of the curves will follow the spine. This pose here, though, is still balanced. So for the next one, I'll focus on some imbalance. This leads us to another thing to keep in mind at level two, flow. In a way, it's similar to what I just talked about, but we're going to add the concept of energy transfer in the pose. I guess the logic that makes the movement slash pose believable. The main force that we'll be playing with while drawing character poses is gravity. We're always pulled towards the ground, so in a way, the ground is always pushing against us, otherwise we'd go right through it like we would in water. I like to imagine that force is a big arrow starting from the ground and traveling through the body. And in the case of this pose right here, exiting through the fingers. You can feel it flow, kind of like a river. No sharp angles, only nice continuous curves. For this other pose here, we can feel the push on the ground in her hips, where this side here is being pushed up compared to the other leg. That energy doesn't stop there though. It travels from the legs to the spine and often into the arms since it's all connected. Thanks to our skeleton. Always think of how that energy impacts the body beyond the more simple gesture curve or curves behind the pose. Now, the last thing that I want to mention at level two will be the silhouette. Focus on the silhouette. Often a particular pose might make sense, but that might not be the best way to draw it if it makes the silhouette more boring. A good example of what not to do could be the drawing of an arm pointing a fist at the camera. Obviously every pose is different, but often you'll get a better figure if you can show more of the arm by introducing a slight bend, in this case, slightly changing the angle. The pose still conveys the same information, but now the silhouette is a lot more interesting. Think of this stuff while drawing poses. Not all dynamic poses are aesthetic, but they usually can be when you focus a little more on the silhouette. Finally, level three. There are only two more things that I want to add to the list to keep in mind for nice dynamic poses. The first item on the list at level three is to introduce the concept of a camera pointing at your character, or more simply, adding perspective. Characters drawn at eye level will often seem less dynamic than characters with more intense perspectives. If you imagine the camera looking up at the character, it can make them feel imposing, make us, the viewer, feel smaller. And in the same way, they'll feel diminished, weaker, if we're looking at them from a higher point of view, as if we're holding the camera and we're way taller than our subject. When we think of perspective, we also think of depth, something that we can use in our poses to increase the dynamism even further. When the character's feet, for example, are drawn at different depths, it helps us feel the space around the character much more than when the feet are on the same level, like in this case here. And that's not as dynamic. Mm -mm. And then finally, the most difficult, but also the one thing that really helps make our poses super dynamic is foreshortening. It's obviously directly related to perspective and it's a way that we have to suggest even more depth, even potentially suggesting interactions between the character and the viewer. Like clearly, she's trying to shoot me in the shoulder. Oh, please don't. Here, her upper right leg and her right arm are very foreshortened in this case and suddenly it kind of feels like we're there with her in the same scene. We've come a long way from where we started here to draw foreshortening properly. 
I recommend that you check out a popular class of mine that I posted a couple of weeks ago dedicated to the topic. Link in the top right corner of the screen and down in the video description. Check it out if you want to be a pro at drawing foreshortening. Now, here's the full list of what we talked about today. Try your best to apply these things and the, your character poses should look super dynamic. Like I said, you don't need to do it all, but try to keep in mind as many as possible. If you're experienced enough to draw dynamic poses from imagination, mm, that's great. But for most of you out there, don't you hesitate to use references. References are your friends. And that's gonna be it for today's class. To congratulate you for listening until the end and gaining max XP for your dynamic pose skill, you can grab one of my two main brush sets for free in the top right corner of the screen and down below again. The brush that I used to sketch today is even included, is the best, but use them responsibly. Now, make sure you have notifications enabled to be on time for next week's class. If you learned something, let me know to keep making weekly videos by paying the class fee if you still haven't and sharing this video with your art buddies, with your secret lover, whoever might be interested to get better at art. And oh, one last thing before the video ends. You want to get me alive? Get out of here.